A mood board can literally make or break your entire design project. I made the grueling mistake of not sending a mood board to my client one time and it ended up costing me my entire profit. Never again have I proceeded with a client project without sending them a mood board first. And I always send more than one mood board. But the highly asked question is, how in the world do you send mood boards to your clients? I'm about to take you step by step through how you can smash the process of creating a mood board for your client every single time. And make sure to watch to the end of the video as I will be sharing something extra special at the end. First up is the research phase. This step includes having your client answer a series of questions helping you to better understand them and their business. Some of these questions include, what are your business's goals? Who are your competitors? What do you not want included in your branding? And several more. Check out the description down below or the link in the pinned comment for access to my full discovery questionnaire that I send to my clients at the beginning of every project. Now also included in this phase is having your clients create a mood board for you. Have your client create and share a Pinterest board with you where they have compiled several different examples of design styles that they like. This includes packaging examples, color schemes, iconography, and imagery, typography, and anything else design related that they like. A tip for this step is to tell your client that the inspiration that they find does not have to be industry specific. It's actually even better if they find imagery and inspiration outside of their industry. This helps to ensure that the design style and direction that you take is not the industry standard and it will help your clients stand out amongst competitors. Okay, so your client has found some inspiration and compiled it all into a Pinterest board and shared it with you. Now is where you get to work. Hang in there, this is where things get fun. We're going to Adobe Illustrator to lay out our design for our mood board. You can do this in Adobe InDesign as well. I personally prefer to use Adobe Illustrator as I find it easier to manipulate the images and I know that I'm going to eventually be pulling the mood board into Adobe Illustrator whenever I'm creating the final brand identity. So I like to just keep it all within Illustrator, just making it a bit easier for me. I usually make my artboard size a 1080 by 1080 document. Now with our artboard created, we're going to grab the rectangle tool by pressing the letter M on our keyboard and then I'm going to click and drag while holding down shift to make a perfect square. If you want to add some personality to your squares, you can grab the live corner widgets, which is this little circle button here, and drag it in to round your corners. Next, I'm going to hold down Alt or Option if you're on a Mac, and click and drag while holding Shift again to copy this rectangle over and place a new one directly next to it. I like to leave a little bit of space between each of the rectangles, just allowing some breathing room. Now I'm going to press Control D to copy that same move, and now we have three squares to start our mood board with. Now I'm going to lasso and select all three of these squares, and again, click and drag while holding down Alt or Option on the keyboard, along with the Shift key, and create a copy of these three squares directly beneath the others. Again, I am pressing Control or Option D to repeat this move until my artboard is filled with these squares. Now, we need to find our own imagery to create these mood boards with. Yes, we had our client gather some imagery inspiration for us earlier. However, that was just to help us as a designer to understand the direction and style that the client likes. It is our job as a designer to conduct proper research to find the correct inspiration and imagery based on the client's discovery questionnaire, their competitor analysis, and our own background knowledge on things like color theory that we need to keep in mind for whenever we're designing the end product of the brand identity. I like to start with Pinterest to find some initial inspiration. I'll search for keywords that might just be a certain color or maybe a certain object like a flower or a certain style like hand-drawn line art. Once I have a few items from Pinterest, I also like to check other resources to make sure I'm not putting all of my eggs into one basket. I might look at Behance, Unsplash, Pexels, and sometimes even Envato to get some more inspiration for my mood boards. Now, sometimes this step can get overwhelming. I'll often take a break after gathering and saving items that I like into collections or boards, and then I'll come back later and look at it all with fresh eyes. 
At this point, I'll start saving the inspiration into folders on my desktop. I mentioned earlier that I always send more than one mood board. So at this stage, I will make two or three folders on my desktop for each individual mood board. And then I will try to categorize each image that I'm saving into the mood board that I think it will fit best with. Often my mood boards will have a drastically different tone to them. One might be more uplifting and bright while the other is more subtle and muted. So what I'm going to do is combine all of my bright inspiration into the same mood board folder and all the muted inspiration into a different mood board folder. So this next step that we're about to do becomes a breeze. All right, back to the fun part of designing the mood boards. We have our inspiration gathered. Now let's put it all into Illustrator. I'm pressing Control or Option P on my keyboard to place the images into Illustrator. I have found the mood board one folder and am just going to select all the images in here and press place. Now I'm going to click and drag one of the images onto one of the squares that we created earlier. Now place your image in the back by pressing control shift left bracket and then lasso and select both the square and image and press control seven and you've now created a clipping mask. So if you need to manipulate the image placement or the image size, simply double click on the image and then you can now transform your image however you would like. Repeat these steps until all of your squares are filled with your images. Now I like to pull color inspiration directly from the images that are on my mood board and then place them in their own designated spot on the mood board. So what I'm gonna do is use the ellipse tool by pressing the letter L on my keyboard and I'm going to click and drag while holding shift to create a perfect circle. I'm going to place these circles in this corner here between these two images. Now I'm going to click and hold alt or option if you're on a Mac and drag while holding shift to place another circle on this corner. And now with both circles selected, I'm going to hold alt or option and shift and drag down into the final two corners. Now I'm selecting one circle and pressing the letter I on the keyboard to grab the eyedropper tool and I'm going to eyedrop a color from my images for the color inspiration on the mood board. Repeat this step for all four circles that you've created. Now when it comes to color, it is important to include a disclaimer on your mood board presentation that states that the colors may change at any point within the project based on the designer's discretion. Sometimes the colors that we chose from our mood board don't end up working for whatever reason. So it's important to share that information with your client that the colors might change. So that way it keeps you safe from having any unhappy or confused clients. Okay, so we've made the first mood board. We now need to create one more, maybe even two. The reason why we create more than one mood board is so that you have enough direction to know what style the client likes. If you only give the client one mood board to choose from, they don't have any idea of any other type of style that they maybe would have liked more. If you provide them with too many mood boards, say four, you're giving them too much to choose from and you're gonna leave your clients confused and not knowing what direction they want to go in. I like to stay between two to three mood boards. I often try to stay at two. Three sometimes can feel a bit overwhelming as well, but there are times whenever you just have no idea what direction or style your client is going to like or what direction you should go in. So sometimes having three is helpful. So to create the next mood board, we are just going to copy this artboard here over by pressing Shift O on our keyboard and then hold down Alt and hold Shift and drag it over and then repeat all of the same steps that we just did for the other mood board to create all the additional mood boards that we're going to make. Okay, mood board designs are done. It's now time to present the mood boards to your client. Remember at the beginning, whenever I said that I had something a little special to share with you at the end, that is coming up very soon. But first I want to give you a glimpse into the presentation that I give to my clients whenever I'm presenting my mood boards to them created a full brand strategy presentation in InDesign that I share with clients that includes their strategy along with mood boards and a short explanation of each that they get to choose from. Now for the special thing. I've created a template for you to share with your clients that includes the strategy and mood boards for their approval. Check out the link in the description down below or the link in the pinned comment to grab that template. I've also created a template with my mood board layout so that you don't have to create your own layout and you can just steal mine. 
Okay, last announcement. I've just walked you through the entire process of creating mood boards for your clients, and I'm providing you with a template that you can use to share the mood boards with your clients for approval. But what do you do with the template once you have it? How do you actually present these mood boards and the strategy to your clients? If you wanna know, make sure to hit subscribe and turn on notifications as that video will be out next Friday. Can't wait? Check out this video right here where I design a full brand identity for a kid's restaurant. But for now, until the next video, remember to become the brand and bye.